Are you dreaming of warmer cottagecore early spring days? Tulips blooming in the garden, reading Jane Austen while early morning sunshine pours through the tree leaves, elaborate tea parties and pouring through Beatrix Potter books and dreamy picnics in meadows? I could go on and on. If the answer is yes, then this video is for you. I'm sharing all of my favorite spring recommendations to help you step into a spring state of mind. I don't know about you guys, but as soon as February is over, it is springtime in my mind. We are doing a deep dive into all things spring today, in which I will recommend books, movies, TV shows, activities, things to me that just feel like springtime. I want these recommendations to help put you in that state of mind. Get ready to screenshot or grab a pen and paper. These recommendations are so good. Excuse me, sir. You're in my spot. I love you. Thank you. I want to take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, June's Journey. I'm so excited for this sponsorship because I truly love this game. I started playing a couple years ago and it has become a happy place for me. Springtime was one of my favorite times to play it because the visuals in this game, they're beautiful. I want to live in this little game. I'm not even kidding, I get design inspiration from it. June's Journey is a hidden objects mystery game. It takes you back to the glamour of the 1920s. I love that it's historical. Not only is it a game, but each scene takes you through a murder mystery. It's free to download. And one of my favorite things about it is how vibrant the colors are. It's so beautifully crafted. You can see so much thought put into the little details. I always loved like Where's Waldo and I Spy books when I was a kid. It's like that, but the stakes are higher. There's so much to do in the game. You can decorate your island, which is a whole nother aspect that I love. You can change it up with the seasons, remodel your mansion and decorate your garden. It's so wholesome. So if you would like to enjoy beautiful aesthetics, escape the world from a little bit, de-stress your mind. Highly recommend June's Journey. You can download it for free by going to the link down in the description box or scanning the QR code here on the screen. Thank you again so much to June's Journey for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the recommendations. So let's get started with my favorite category, books. Starting with I'm gonna insert a picture of me reading this book a couple years ago. It was a journey, it was an experience. The book is Into the Heartless Wood by Joanna Ruth Meyer. This book follows our main character, Owen, who lives in this cottage on the outskirts of town, right on the border of these woods. There's a wall because the people aren't supposed to go into the woods because there is an evil witch queen there who takes men from the village, and consumes them, and that gives them life and has these tree daughters. There's eight of them. And they also kind of go do this business for her. But Owen maps the stars for the king. And one day he becomes friends with one of these girls, one of these trees, but it's actually not a tree. It might just be a siren, so like a mermaid, but this is a tree and she is an incredible character. He had to go into the woods to find his missing sister. And while in there, this girl, this tree, saves his life. And ever since then, he can't stop thinking about her. If you like fairy tales for adults, I cannot more highly recommend this. Next, I have a classic, but before I go into it too much, I want to say that with this recommendation comes a recommendation of how to read it. The book is the Wind in the Willows. We all know about this book. It's on every list of books to read during springtime or cottagecore books. But here's the thing, it's on that list for good reason. This is springtime coziness, coming back to life and flowers and rivers and picnics. All of that is in here. So here's my recommendation for how to read it. What we've been doing, me and Jared, is we read it to each other at night. We've gotten ready for bed, put on our pajamas. A lot of times I'll have some peppermint tea and then we take turns reading a chapter. You're never too old for bedtime stories, just like you're never too old for fairy tales. So I highly recommend choosing this as your spring bedtime story this year. I can pretty much guarantee that you will enjoy it, especially before bedtime. Next book is such a hidden gem. It is cozy fantasy. The blurb on the back is what got me to pick it up. A human, a dwarf, and an elf walk into a bake-off. So it's been described as the Hobbit meets the Great British Baking Show or Bake Off. Drum roll, please. This 
is The Fellowship of Bakers and Magic by Jay Penner. If you liked Legends and Lattes, I think you will adore this book. I actually like this better than Legends and Lattes. This is a slice of life cozy fantasy that follows a baker named Arletta and she lives in this quaint little village. One day an elf appears on her doorstep inviting her to participate in this baking competition that takes place in the capital city that's quite a journey far, far away. At first she is so confused because she didn't enter it, but she ends up deciding to accept it. And this book has a lot of things that I love, especially for springtime books. There's this journey to get to a place. I love staying at taverns and food, the fun that comes along with journeying somewhere, especially when it's to a castle. Baking to me, especially Great British Baking Show, feels very spring. Just don't pick this one up if you're hungry because you will be craving all of the pastries, cookies, and lemon cakes, and oh my gosh. If you are a Jane Austen girly and you have not read this, what are you doing? This is The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. This book is perfection. It, it is perfect. This is Mary's story from Pride and Prejudice. You see Pride and Prejudice in this book, but you also get what happened before Pride and Prejudice and what happens after. But it is very much different. Like you're not just gonna feel like you're rereading Pride and Prejudice, but from Mary's perspective, it is her story. And there are these scenes when they go to the Lake District in England and they go on these hikes and the way nature is described the clouds and the water and the fields and meadows. I fell in love. I fell in love. It has been years since I first read it and I still think about it. I will probably be rereading this book for the rest of my life. And then if you saw my previous video, you saw me gushing about this book. It is one of the most perfect romances that I've read in a really long time. It felt like a Nora Ephron film in the form of a book, 1990s, early 2000s rom-com, but so much more than a romance book because to me, there was a lot in this story that made me feel like a new person, like expanded my mind and I felt just like a whole new version of myself in the best way possible. It made me feel so happy. And that book is Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. This follows a girl who gets pregnant, for coming to terms of what it's gonna be like to have a baby, to be a mother, and to embrace that new chapter in her life. But as someone who has never been pregnant and won't be anytime soon and doesn't even love books, that involve pregnancy or babies. I ate this up. Set in New York City. The story starts, I think, in October and it ends during springtime. Kind of like in You've Got Mail, giving birth, new romance. All of that felt very springy because it's like the beginning of something new and beautiful. I gave this six out of five stars, which I only give a few books every year. That is how incredible it was. Highly recommend this. Now, if you are looking for a book, if you're a Bridgerton girl and you want more Bridgerton in your life, but you've already read the books and or watched the series, I have two recommendations for two different audiences. If you don't mind spice in your romance, Romance, then I have to recommend The League of Extraordinary Ladies. I think that's what this series is called by E.B. Dunmore. Each book follows a different leading lady. For example, at the back of this one, London banking heiress Hattie Greenfield wanted just three things in life. A claim as an artist, a noble cause, and to marry a young lord who puts the gentle in gentlemen. Got like reformed rakes and dukes, balls. But there's also a lot more to them. There is a suffragette movement. A lot of them also have passions, like careers that they want to pursue. And I love that. And then if you are a fan of closed door romances and don't like any spice, you just want the wholesome vibes, I cannot. Guys, if you have not read Edenbrook, you are missing out. I remember reading this book so slowly so I could savor every page. I would even say just to go into this one blind, don't even read a bunch of the synopsis. You could wait until the first day that really feels like spring when you can hear the birds chirping outside and the flowers starting to bloom. You make your favorite cup of tea and curl it by the window and open this treat of a book and just let yourself get immersed in the beautiful story that is Eden Brooke. Okay, those are all of the books. Let's move on to movies. The 
The purpose of watching one of these movies is to make you feel like spring. Spring state of mind. I watched one of these last night and I cried because it, it made me feel like a kid again and reminded me what life was like going on picnics and playing outside in the dirt. It reminded me of all these things. So we're just gonna kick it off with that one. And that is Nanny McPhee Returns. Specifically the second one. The first one is also really good, but I prefer the second one. It stars Maggie Gyllenhaal, Ian McGregor, Maggie Smith, so Professor McGonagall. It has an insane cast, but not only that, it's set in a cottage in the English countryside during the war. It is so funny and it will remind you what it's like to be a kid and laugh at like silly comedic stuff. It's about this household of, some would say like out of control children. They're fighting, they're not sharing. And then arrives Nanny McPhee. And her rule is when you don't want me, but need me, I must stay. Well, when you want me, but don't need me anymore, it's time for me to leave. But there's all of the elements that I want in a spring cottagecore film. They go on a picnic and drink ginger beer and get so excited about the simple little things because it is taking place during the war. So every little thing is so exciting and special to them. There are scenes where they have to chase these prized piglets so that they won't get away and they can be sold at the market. And they're running around the countryside chasing these pigs. And it's just, it's so cute and wholesome. And along with that is the Peter Rabbit movie. These movies are so underrated. I do not see these movies getting the love that they deserve. It's set in the English countryside. Peter Rabbit being from Beatrix Potter. That already is such a huge nod to springtime. If it's got a cottage, English countryside, cute little fluffy animals, that's, that is all I need. If you have a lazy Sunday to lay in and you want to step into a mental state of springtime, I highly recommend putting these on. If you're like me and spring, it's a time of classic literature like Jane Austen, Edith Wharton, Thomas Hardy, and you like films like North and South and Pride and Prejudice and Emma, you most definitely need to watch A Room with a View, which is based on a book by Ian Forster. It stars a very young Helena Bonham Carter. I think I said her name right. She's also in Harry Potter, along with Maggie Smith is in this again. It's set in the beautiful landscapes of England and Italy. It's about a girl named Lucy who is kind of fed up with the societal and cultural restrictions of Edwardian England. She meets and develops this love for this young, free-spirited man named George. She's fighting for both love and independence at the same time and realizes that with George she can have both and it is so so incredibly beautiful, this film. I just remember it had like a very lasting impact on me. I highly, highly recommend it. I'm gonna include this one, even though I have not seen it yet. On Netflix, March 15th, a movie comes out and it's called Irish Wish, and it stars Lindsay Lohan. Based on the trailer, it seemed like it's going to be set during spring. It's listed as a romantic comedy. It follows Maddie, played by Lindsay Lohan, who puts aside her feelings for the love of her life when he gets engaged, I think, to her best friend. So she just decides that she's just gonna be happy for her friend and go be a bridesmaid at the wedding in Ireland. Then, days before the wedding, she makes a spontaneous wish to find true love. Turns out she wakes up the next day as the bride-to-be, and that's all we know. But it sounds like it's gonna be super cute. So I think if you're wanting a light-hearted romantic comedy to enjoy during spring, this could be a great option. Again, I don't know if it's good or not, but it's on my list of movies to watch. Now let's talk about TV shows. <laughs> The spring recommendations that I have this year, I feel like are the best that I've had. These are so good. First one, if you have watched Bridgerton, if you like Jane Austen and the historical romance vibe and aesthetic for spring and you have not watched The Buccaneers. Do that immediately after this video is over. This show made me feel like it was Christmas. I would only allow myself one episode every day because it was so good. I wanted to savor it. I would literally wake up in the morning, get out of bed and be so excited to watch my episode that day. It's based on an unfinished novel called The Buccaneers by Edith Wharton. It's set in the 1870s and it follows these young American women who are sent to secure 
husbands and titles and there's kind of like a cultural clash between what they're used to versus the tightly knit culture and the way society is in London, especially during the season. The costumes, the setting, the balls, it screams springtime. I think it will be the perfect thing to enjoy while waiting for Bridgerton season three. Now, maybe searching for a husband at balls, dukes and refined rakes, it's not really your vibe. Maybe you enjoy farms and animals, family and friendship. If that's the case, I think you absolutely must check out all Things Great or Small by Masterpiece. You can watch it on Amazon Prime. It is based on a wonderful book by James Harriet, which is kind of a cottage core staple. It follows a young veterinarian in the 1930s into the 1940s. The storytelling is so vivid and it blends so much warmth and heart and humor. You see what this daily life is like being a young vet in rural England, the equivalent of a warm cup of tea. It just warms you from the inside out and is such a great stress reliever. I love it and I can't recommend it enough. Now, if you like Hmm, how should I put this? If you like heists, historical romance, but also a woman wanting to become a surgeon. It has so many things going on. For those of you who have seen this, you know what I'm talking about. It is called The Artful Dodger. So what is this show about, Desi? I could go on and on because this has been my recent obsession. So it's about Jack Doc, Doc, what's his name? Jack Dawkins better known as the Artful Dodger, which is actually a character from Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist. It takes place 15 years after the events of Oliver Twist. Basically, he left that world behind as a pickpocket and became a surgeon, but his past comes back to haunt him and he ends up needing to owe somebody a lot of money or else they're going to cut off his hand and then he wouldn't be able to be a surgeon anymore. He has to come up with this money and at the same time, there's an incredible, beautiful woman begging him to teach teach her to be a surgeon because she has been reading about all the studies and the findings that have been going on in London and all the advances that they're making that they aren't making in Australia. My only recommendation is to don't eat while you watch this show because there are parts during the surgeries that can be a bit graphic. I just have to tell myself it's not real. That's It's not real. It's just paint or something <laughs> to help me get through those scenes. But it is so good because the romance, like I don't even have words right now because I'm just speechless because I love it so much. There's so many different facets, him trying to get the money, him falling for her, him trying to be a better surgeon and learning new techniques. Like there's, there's so much going on. It is such a ride. I highly recommend it. And one that I haven't actually watched, so I'm just gonna kind of put this in here as an honorable mention because I'm gonna start watching it. And that is Pushing Daisies. A lot of you recommended this to me when I was asking for spring shows to watch this year. I just started the first episode and was like, wow, this could not be more like spring centered. You can see all of the flowers and the vibrant colors. And there's a narrator that kind of reminded me of George of the Jungle with Brendan Fraser. You know how there's a narrator all throughout that movie? There, that's how it is in the show. It's about this man who, when he touches something, it dies. But when he touches it again, it's brought back to life then if he touches it again, it dies for real. So there's a murder mystery because he can bring people back to life, get their story, figure out how someone might've been killed, but there's also romance that's really sweet and wholesome. So I'll be watching this and I'll let you know my thoughts. Now moving on to things. physical items that I just like to surround myself with or bring out of storage or acquire at a thrift store. The first thing being a new spring mug, or it doesn't have to be new. You could find a beautiful teacup at a thrift store. I got this one you saw again in my previous video from Millie's Pottery. A frog tea party, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't get better than that. Having it to drink my tea out of every morning, it just makes me so happy. I look forward to drinking out of it every day. And then choosing three books. So I guess this is more of an activity than a thing, but choose three books that you want to focus on this season. I always choose one Jane Austen book because spring is when I love to delve back into Jane Austen. So this year I'm going to be choosing Emma. If you're not really into Jane Austen, it can be any classic like The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem or Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. And then I choose one nonfiction book. This year I chose The Cottagecore Baking Book by Kayla 
Labramere, this is my dream cookbook. If I could have envisioned the most perfect cookbook that feels like spring, but also hobbits, but also pastries that you would find at a table in Pride and Prejudice, all of those things put together in one book, that is this book. So this is my nonfiction book. I'm going to be making my way through this this spring. And then I always choose a cozy cottage core book and that could be anything. Though this year I'm gonna be reading The Faye's Bride by R.L. Medina. The blurb on the back kind of makes me think of Pride and Prejudice, but not. It's a busy witch, an enamored count, an enchanted villa filled with nosy sisters. And this is marketed as Italian cottage core. One classic one nonfiction and one cozy cottagecore book. And then this is kind of a given, but fresh cut flowers. There is something about the way a room just feels different with fresh cut flowers in it. When you walk in, you can smell them and just seeing them brings so much joy. Amazon also has these really beautiful faux flowers. I'm gonna get these faux tulips because tulips are one of my favorite flowers, but with three cats, it's not something I'm willing to risk having inside because of how toxic they are. And then also a new tea. My personal favorite this year has been lavender chamomile. Sometimes I find if I don't purposely choose a new tea, I end up still drinking some autumnal ones that I just have in my cupboard, but making the choice to choose a new tea, maybe a berry flavored tea or floral, something new to you or a classic favorite of yours that you can look forward to having every morning during your reading time or during your downtime in the evening, just something to look forward to, but also have it be a part of your staple routine it is an easy way to include a little bit of spring in your daily life. And then wellies, I think I love calling them wellies by the way, rain boots just don't sound as cute as wellies, but having a good pair of wellies to go jump in puddles is a must, guys. This is the spring. We are honoring our inner child. We are jumping in puddles and playing in the rain and you need some good wellies to do that. There are really cute ones you can find online, ones with really cute designs and patterns, but you can also find them. I've seen them so often at the thrift store. And then soft printed fabrics, floral hair bandanas, lace tablecloth, or gingham napkins, or even pajamas. Fable has these really beautiful cottagecore pajamas. They have the prettiest lilac with plants and animals on them. And then also artwork. You can find beautiful frames at the thrift store. And then sometimes I'll just go into Etsy and find like a spring pack of artwork, like a gallery wall. And you can print it off at Walgreens or your local print shop and add some Monet to your walls or whatever you're interested in for springtime. You could do Studio Ghibli and print out scenes from the movies that are your favorite. I lean towards like the fine art that you might see in a museum, a lot of landscapes or women reading books. Finally, things to do. Starting with opening windows. So if you live somewhere that's been cold and it's finally getting a little bit warmer to the point where you can open your windows and you don't feel like you're freezing, it's your sign to start doing that every day. Open the windows. Not only is it good for your health to get fresh air in, but you start to hear the birds and I swear you can smell springtime. I also saw recently that there's a study that showed that people who listen to bird song or birds chirping in the morning actively feel happier throughout the day. So there's that. Open your windows. Another thing is sometimes during spring, we can have a lot of rainy days, right? But a good way to romanticize those rainy days is to pick up a book and open a window, even if it's just for a crack and listen to that rain and read your book. I find that listening to the rain while reading a book is such a good way, almost for my mind to be in a state of meditation because the rain sound is so calming and consistent and reading a book helps me kind of detach from other stressors in my life and just focus on the story. The combination of the two is so great for your mental health. And then this is something I just did. Pick the first flowers of the season that you see and press them and then write the date and where you found them and start keeping a journal of pressed flowers that you find throughout the season and then eat strawberries. It is strawberry season or is nearly here and the strawberries are becoming so delicious and fragrant. Eat the fruit that is coming into season this spring. Mm, I'm so excited. A strawberry season is my favorite. And then it's so fun with a new season to pick a new hobby to focus on or even just to try out. This season I've really been into making chokers or necklaces. 
but not in the traditional sense. I just use a ribbon and I put a little charm on it and then I wrap it around. I saw some pictures on Pinterest like this. It's just been fun to go to Michael's, pick up some new ribbons and some new charms. I can even make necklaces based on my outfit. I didn't make this one that I'm wearing, but I wanna get more into it and maybe make some more intricate ones like this one. And then lastly, going for a morning walk. After winter, a lot of us are gonna be lacking in vitamin D and now that the sun is out for a bit longer. So whether it's the morning or the evening, preferably morning, because I think the sun is a bit brighter and it's easier to get that vitamin D in the morning. Also, it helps with your circadian rhythm. Being out and seeing that sun first thing, it can help with your dopamine. It can help with your mood throughout the day, just seeing sun for 20 minutes in the morning. So you could listen to an audiobook or a podcast or just listen to the wind or the birds and go for a walk. It will make you feel so good. Even if it's slow, even if you're just kind of meandering and wandering. You could forage a bit. You can look for flowers and signs of spring. Highly, highly recommend. So those are all of my recommendations. If you guys have any recommendations for me, please leave them in the comments because I will be reading all of them and I absolutely take notes and write down your recommendations. I wouldn't have known about pushing daisies if it wasn't for you guys recommending it to me. Also, I think other commenters love to read through comments. I've noticed the community here is the type of community that really gets involved. You guys comment on each other's comments and I, just, I love seeing it. Thank you so much for being here and thank you to my patrons over in Honeywood Hollow this channel would not be possible if it wasn't for my patrons. So thank you guys so much. I am wishing you a beautiful springtime, sending you my love and a big virtual hug. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye friends.